Hi, this is Rich Golds from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to provide a demo and a bit of an overview of how Critical Path, Float, Interdependencies and Baselines work in Smartsheet. So let's dive in and have a look. So what I've got here is I've got a time plan and it's already mapped out and you can see it's got various hierarchy levels within it and it's got duration, predecessors, and it's got the Gantt chart here. So I'm not going to go into any of that detail, but you can see here various predecessors and some with multiple predecessors. So let's start with the first thing, the critical path. So if you go to the top right-hand corner, you can see this little red button with three rows, show the critical path, pretty simple. So let's turn it on, and that's a fabulous tool to help you see what the critical path is for your project. Now bear in mind that if you're doing a report, which you're including on a dashboard, the critical path won't come through on a report view, but it is always in the Gantt view within a sheet on that side. So in terms of the critical path, what is it? In, in essence, it is the shortest time it takes from the start to the end of the project to get it done. So let's just collapse down. So I'm just gonna collapse all. Critical path, the project starts on the 1st of August, and it ends here on the 19th of June, 2023. The critical path is anything that affects that time plan, which will push it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna expand all again, and let's just see that in example. So scroll back down to the bottom. So you can see here, early life support is currently on the critical path, four weeks. If that changes at all and were to be delayed, in fact, that's not for the launch, but let's go back to something earlier on. So mobilize assets, that's four weeks. This is on the critical path here. If that's pushed out, what you're going to do is you're going to see that the launch go live is pushed out as well. So let's turn four weeks into five weeks and you can see the whole thing pushes out by that item. So again, it's the shortest time that you can deliver your project in, which is a critical path. And anything that makes that shortest time longer affects the critical path. So I'm going to undo that. So what you can see is items that are not on the critical path here. So you can see load web content currently is not on the critical path, that's fine. So, and it's got 20 days duration, the team might think, ah, oh, fine, we've got loads of time. However, what you'll find is if they go and take longer, let's just move this out to be 30 days, for example, then suddenly it is on the critical path, so it impacts the project. So having the critical path is really useful in that side. So where next on this bit? So this is all working because I've got predecessors set up on the project. So what are predecessors? Predecessors are, it's the links between different tasks on your project and saying what must happen first before this task to happen. So if we look at the task here in terms of to the launch and go live, what you'll see here is it has got a predecessor of 41 with a finish to start predecessor. So what it's saying is the row 41, this task must be finished and there must be a two week gap before the launch takes place. So finish to start plus two weeks. So that's a predecessor. And if I click on this bit, you can see there's various items here. So in this case, I've actually said that task must finish in order for the next one to start, but there's gonna be a lag, i.e. a delay of, or a holding time of two weeks before that. So the lag can often be, for example, if you've got something where, let's just take um, something needs to dry, for example, you're painting a house and, you know, um, your, you've plastered the walls and you've got to let it set for a period of time before you can go and paint, then you would put insert the task finishes on this day, but there'll be a lag for the curing of that um, plaster board, for example, the plastering on that piece. Now, in terms of this, you can see that actually you can add in a series of predecessors. And one of the ways of adding in predecessors is that you can also drag them between. So, for example, if I wanted to make this predecessor and let me just go up and find a different one. If I wanted to make this predecessor and add a dependency to the go live date, I can drag it down and there you can see that line has been added in and this has been added to the selection of predecessors in this case. So as you see, print marketing collateral, that's the one I've just added in. I'm gonna take it out because it's not needed. And again, it can be added in either by dragging, as I've just shown you, or by adding it here. Types of predecessors, so you've got a finish to start, which means that the previous task must have finished for the next one to start. 
Again, you've got a finish to finish, so the previous task must have, fi be, have finished for your task to finish. Again, start to start and start to finish. Again, I'm not going to go into the definitions of these because there's plenty more resources on the web to explain all that bit. So let's focus on the Smartsheet content here. So the other interesting point that um, Smartsheet added in, and this is a was a feature that came in in February 2022, um, was adding float. So this is a formula, and let me just go and unlock this and say convert to cell formula so you can see what's in here. So what I've got here is I've got a formula called total float. So let me just go on to total float on that bit, and let me just zoom in. So you've got total float, and what it, do, it does is it calculates, trying to zoom in a bit more, calculates the number of days that a task can be delayed without impacting the project finish date. Okay, so let's just come out of there. What it means by project finish date is if we scroll to the top, that is the end date. So it's the end date listed at the top of your project. And what it's doing is the formula, it's a pretty simple formula here. Now what I've done is I've modified it slightly. So let me just go in, I've, I've changed this bit. So the total float is, so you add in equals total float, and then literally you put in the primary column, which in this case is task name, and it's, it still works on that bit. And let me just see what I've done. Then you take the bracket off, and there we go, and it's zero. Now the reason why I have modified it slightly is that if I have it without the level, so I'm just gonna copy this so we have it for a moment. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm just gonna put it in the comments column here, just so we got it. So if I now turn this one into a column formula, let me just convert to column formula, you'll see that the float is in all the rows, whereas actually these are the parent rows, which has got a roll-up information. Now, in my case, I think it's better to have it just so it's showing the tasks which actually are influenceable within that piece. So that's why I add in, if the level, in my case, because I'm saying, has this level got any parents? And in this case, these tasks here do not have a parent. So if the level is blank, i.e. there's no parent, then show me the total float. So that's the point of this piece here. So what I'm just gonna go do is I'm gonna add that one back in. If level, sorry, I wanna copy this in. So copy, I'm going to go and adjust, therefore, my column formula, edit column formula, paste that back in, and here we go. And it's not quite right. So why is it not quite right? Because I haven't got an equals in front of it. That's a pretty good point. So there we go, and those are deleted. So. How is this working? So let's just have a look at this in a bit. So what this is showing you here on the load web content is, oh, it's got a float of 10 days. Therefore, that's fine. I've got 10 spare days at the end of this task without affecting the launch date. Well, yes and no. What you'll see here is this task actually finishes on a Friday, the 14th, and the next start starts on the Monday. So in reality, it's 10 days, yes, before affecting this launch date. So from here to here, then that's 10 days, two weeks. But what you'll see is this task here is only gonna start two weeks after this one is. And the, ta the next task is on the critical path. So between there and there, there is no give. If I take it back and say that is, sorry, the, I'm gonna make this to be 10 days. You can see then the float is 20 and that's fine and, it, and it's all right. So if I make that back to 20, then it's fine, but if I make this task 21, you're gonna see it suddenly hits the critical path because any delays on that bit is gonna push out the timings on that side. So the float, be aware, you need to look through what are the interdependencies and if anything downstream from that task that has got remaining float, is that on the critical path? So you need to see what's the next task associated with that task that's on the critical path. So there we have float. So the next piece I just wanted to go into is the baselines. So baseline is absolutely brilliant on this bit. So what it enables you to do is to baseline a project. What is that? It means at the start of the project, what is the date that we have agreed with the management team that we're gonna deliver this project on? So once you've gone through and you've gone through planning cycles, and again, it's going through and making sure it's right and you're happy to say, this is the date which we're confident we're gonna start working to as a team. And again, roughly right. Again, and it depends on the management style of the business that you know you should be able to set a baseline and it's your best estimate at that moment in time. Now, some things need to be very precise. Other things, so it depends. So I'll leave conversations on debates on baselines for something else. 
Now, in terms of a baseline though, this feature is brilliant because once you've agreed that we can now baseline the project and have I got it? So scope and charter agreed. In that case here on this project, once that's done, I would then set the baseline on a project. So press the button and it says, show the baseline in Gantt, yes. And it says, right, well, the dates you have in your plan, that is the baseline. We're now gonna remember that and any variance against that, we will then see and show you that there is a difference or a variance on that bit. So it's a schedule, variance on schedule. So if I now set this, the baseline columns are added. And what it's done is it's added in a couple of columns here. So baseline start, finish, and variance on this bit. And the variance here is currently zero days. So what happens now is if anything happens and there are delays on the project, so agree business requirements, for example, you can see currently, if I zoom in again, well, that task, there's a little black line underneath showing these are the original start dates on that bit. So I zoom back out. What happens here? So if I go to this one in terms of agree business requirement and that is delayed for whatever reason, so let's just gonna make that eight weeks. What has happened is that task has pushed out. And again, so if I just zoom in again on this bit, what you can see is that the original task date is down below that black line. And then everything that's been impacted that's on the critical path in effect, has been pushed out. So you can see the impact that change has had. And so this is absolutely brilliant for seeing when things change, what is the impact of that change on your project? So baselines, that is set and zoom out. So the baseline is set. And now what you can see is what's the variance? What's been a knock-on effect on the project? So that's changed. And let's just go downstream and say something else has changed now. So I'm gonna find something else so further downstream in the project, something else has happened. And let's just go back to something that is on the critical path. So bah, 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 bah. let's just find an example. So the user acceptance testing, that's three weeks on the critical path. I'm now gonna say that's been delayed and that's been pushed out to six weeks. So what's happening now in the variance column, you can see these have moved out to 25 days because anything impacted that's got interdependencies linked to that has also been pushed out. But items which aren't connected to that are actually our predecessors of the previous one. They still make, keep the variance of 10 days. But overall, if we scroll up, what is the total variance on the project? 25 days. And again, you can map this into dashboards so you see the variance on your dashboard overall. And then this can be really useful. Now, through the course of a project, it might be that, okay, this is the issue. The project's now gone red. You've had management meetings and you've agreed. Okay, we now know that this project isn't gonna hit these dates, we now will agree an action plan and agree revised dates. So what this means you can do is then you can go into the baseline and you can either reset the baseline or remove the baseline. In this case, what I'm gonna do is gonna say, okay, we now accept that we are behind schedule, we've replanned on this bit, this is the latest plan, so now what we're gonna do is going to reset. So the baseline dates will change to match the start and end dates in your schedule. Do you want to reset the baseline? Yes, please. So I'm gonna now reset that. And what it's done is it's again added in further columns. So let me just go in and across here. So, or rather what, what I've done, sorry. Let me just come, come back again. So I reset that baseline. And so I don't have a record now of what the previous baseline was. What is more valuable in, the, in this case is that you want to actually have a record of what the original baseline was. So what I had done was I reset it. Let's just go down and again, and let's just move some, hide some things out of the way that we don't really need to know about. So let me hide columns. Okay, so let's just go into some tasks and we've got the baseline dates. So let's just go and choose again. So business requirements, eight weeks. Let's just make that 12 weeks again. So it was 12 days, let's go to 12 weeks, W. And again, the baseline is there. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm now going to save that. And in terms of the baseline, the variance is there. So now what I wanna do is if I want to keep a record of the, that baseline, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to remove it. So this will no longer be tracked and they are there. So they are, sorry, let me read it out. So if I turn it off, it means the columns will still be there on the sheet. So you, what you do is you have a record of that bit. So now I'm gonna remove it. I now have the baseline dates here, but what I wanna do is, so I've got that record, I'm gonna lock these. And 
again, I'm going to say, you know, baseline, and what I can do is I'm going to go, so original baseline start, for example, and just copy that word, copy, okay, and there we go, original baseline finish, and here we go, just change this one as well, you'll see why in a moment, original variance, and this is now saved, you can lock these columns so no one else can do anything with them, um, again, so let's just go and lock the columns, hide them, and whatever you want to do. But what I'm going to do now is we've now said, right, okay, we now need to reset the baseline. So what I'm going to do is I am, we're back on schedule, I'm now going to set the baseline. So baseline columns have been added, and what you can see is it's added in new baseline columns. So again, that information's there. What you've got is therefore you can have baseline after baseline after baseline which are recorded, and you've got that information to see over time what has happened over the course of project. Again, how do you get better at projects? You learn by how things have happened previously on this bit. So that's one of the key features of the baselining and being able to see that information and how you reset it. Again, this feature is available to people with admin access. So again, you don't want people going in and changing and resetting the baseline. So again, the people who can change that are admins. Again, think about it in terms of your project managers. Do they have admin or editor access on that bit because you want them to reset the baseline? My recommendation is that's something you probably want your PMO to be doing instead. So there we have it. A bit of a run through on the critical path, float, interdependencies and baselines. I trust that's been useful. If you want any more thoughts, videos on project management and PMO setup within the um, Smartsheet environment, Please have a look at the other videos. I'll get in touch if you want to discuss any of your requirements. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.